and we should be live. Let's just give it a minute until I can uh, see that you're actually here. Oh, did you have an injury, Janie? What happened? And there you are. Welcome, everyone. Hi, Suzanne. You felt on it? You felt on what? <laughs> Welcome, Sam. Nice to see you here. Welcome, Michaela. So we've got seven minutes before to start. We're just waiting for everyone to get in. Cute hair, <laughs> it's my normal hair. <laughs> uh, yeah, I usually hide it. And Sandrine is here. Welcome, Sandrine. With the last minute questions. <laughs> Hi, Joanne. So we've got six minutes to go. Let us know in the chat where are you tuning from. We still have plenty of time. Yeah, I like the sign as well. It's not mine. None of this is mine. We might have to move at some point, by the way. Paris, cool. Because this is not my room, but it's the only place where I have a good signal in the in the building. Hi, Celine. So, yeah, and I've... Okay, no, I'm not going to show you because it's a bit messy, but it looks like someone has been sleeping here. It's not anybody's room. We're not... We're not meant to sleep in here anymore because of the... we in the attic, so because of the fire risk and everything. But I can see a duvet and a mattress, so I think some one of my flatmates might have a guest sleeping here at the moment. So if uh, we are being interrupted, we know why. But I'm ready. I've got the jacket and everything, so if we have to go, we can just go for a walk outside. It's actually 49, I think, uh, Connie. Remind me the question in five minutes once everyone is here. Well, actually, it probably doesn't matter. I'm not going to... Usually on a normal tour, I would cut off the, the pre-chat, you know, because it's ne not necessarily uh, interesting for the, the general public, let's say. But today, it's... Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm guessing everyone here knows me from before. I don't think we'll have any newbies tonight. Hi, Connie. Hi, Linda from Alabama. And Jerry is here as well. So we've got four minutes before to start. So I've already got a lot of, not a lot actually, a fair amount of questions that you guys have been sending me on, uh, on uh, well, on YouTube itself or on different channels as well. But if you have any last minutes, questions, feel free to put them in the chat as well. It's just that it's probably going to be a bit harder for me to keep up. So you might have to pause them twice, but feel free to do so. It's, uh, it's all, uh, all fine. The rose one is smelling lovely. Nice. I've not tried any of your soaps yet, Sam. I suppose I should one day. You need to know my favorite food. I think there's one question that is food related, actually. So we've got three minutes, three minutes before we officially start. And also, if we happen to have any signal dips, do let me know and we can just move on and go outside. Because I have streamed in this room before when I did uh, the Monopoly uh, dice uh, throwing. Most of the time it's been absolutely fine, but we had one day that uh, we had issues. So, Hi Giovanni, nice seeing you here. So we've got three minutes to go. 
So if any of you are watching this on replay in the next few days and you want to skip the hellos, feel free to skip the next uh, three minutes. Uh, uh -oh. No, that's good, because I could hear someone behind the door. Um, cool, I'll make a note of that one, uh, the victim of crime. If I forget, um, do, uh, do copy it again in the chat in a few minutes. Uh, yes, I, I mean, I could send, uh, I mean, gifts are always lovely. I could, I could send you my address, uh, um, privately. Yeah. Uh, although don't send me anything too big because the deal here is that I can be kicked out in 28 days. That is why it's a little bit cheaper than a normal rent. Um, so yeah, it could be, uh, I don't want anything too bulky because, uh, if I have to put anything in a storage or anything like that. I say you here, nice to see you here. And I can PO box. No, I mean you can have my actual address, but yeah, maybe on private message or something. <laughs> so we've got one minute. Don't send me a pony. I'm actually scared of ponies. I had a terrible accident when I was a kid. I, I, I had to do pony with school and uh, and I had to choose my pony. So I chose a girl because the male, they had some big penises. And I chose one that was called Natalia. So she was meant to be brilliant, right? Well, she threw me on the floor to go and, to go and eat some pony food. And I fell on my head. Luckily, I had a helmet, but I never wanted to do pony again. I find it amazing, people that go horse riding and stuff, because at the end of the day, they put their life in in, in, in their trust in, in an animal, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm scared. <laughs> anyway, it is officially time to start. So, welcome, everyone. Nice uh, seeing you all here. So, as most of you might know, it's my first uh, um, Ask Me any sh Anything Ask me anything uh, um, session, so I'm still uh, still learning. Um, I've got a lot of questions on here already, um, but there were a couple that were just asked now in the chat, so I might as well start with them before I uh, before I forget. But before we start, I need to ask you the questions I've got. Do you want me to tell you the name of whoever asked them? Do you want me to say, "Oh, Tish asked that," or "Or, or Celine asked that"? Or do you prefer them to be anonymous? It's completely up to you. Let me know in the chat. Yeah, Dr. Benita, I've got I've got a screenshot of, of that already. So I'll, I'll uh, yeah. So should I tell you who's asking the question, or do you not care? Do you you want the names? Yeah, name on shame. No, I didn't have any shameful questions. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. Name is okay. Cool. Right. So, uh, let me get back to the questions in the chat. Someone asked me if there's a murder victim that I feel particularly sorry for. Uh, yes, there are many. Although, you know, we only know what we know. Like... Okay, I might tell you I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry for Elizabeth Stride. Well, I don't know her, you know. Maybe she wasn't that nice. Maybe she was a beep, you know. So you can only feel sorry for them because of what you know of them. Uh, and, and we don't know. How can we know someone that lived 140 years ago? So yeah, there are a lot of victims and v victims and, and potential, potential guilty parties as well because there's a lot of people that have been accused of murder and you know it destroyed their lives as well so there's quite a quite a long list but yeah um i would say uh, uh most of the victims i feel i feel sorry for you know uh although i enjoy telling those stories and i feel like the most you know the, the the further back in time the easiest it is for us to to tell the story and and, and feel like it's you know, like if I tell you about a crime in a crime in Roman times, 
I'm not going to feel as, as touched as a crime yesterday, you know, where technically it's the same crime, but somehow the, the period of time that has passed um, makes us feel a bit, uh, a bit better about it. But uh, yeah. Cool. What was the other one? There was another one in the chat that I said, oh, well. Oh, yeah. So the flatmates. Um, I think it's 49 of us at the moment in the building. So for the ones that don't know, I live in a funny accommodation. I live in a former nursing home. And um, so I have a lot of flatmates. But so, yeah, it's I think it's it might be 49 or 50 of us. But do I have my own bathroom? Not really. We have maybe 12 showers across the building. I actually live on the third floor and I shower downstairs because I like the, the nice uh, pressure. But I have my own toilets, um, which is, that's amazing. I don't have the shower, but I have a sink and the toilet, which is perfect because I lived in a lot of flat shares before. And I can tell you, sharing the toilet can be a nightmare. Where I lived before to be here, I was in Clapham Junction and the toilet seat was wood, like dark brown. <clears throat> no, no further comment. But that was the most, the the the, the most uh, awful memories of that place. It's whatever happened to be on the toilet seat sometimes. So yeah, it's uh, it's lovely to have um, to have my own toilet, and uh, we've got like four kitchens. So even though it's many of us, there are not that many sharing my kitchen, and um, usually I find that I eat a bit later than the Brits anyway. So it's never too busy uh, in there. Right, let's, uh, there's one more thing I suppose I should tell you just in case if, uh, if anyone was watching this and they were completely new to me from, from YouTube, tonight we might mention Hegel, we might mention Beams. So for the ones that don't know, those are the streaming platforms on which I used to stream before, before to end up on YouTube. And um, I think it's fair to say that most people in the chat tonight are actually um, survivors from that, that Hego community. So if you were relatively new to me and you didn't know what Hego is, it was a platform that was created through, through COVID that was a streaming platform that sadly closed last um, April. <laughs> I talk about death a lot. If I could choose, what, how would I die? Well, Natasha, you know what? I just found out last night that I'm going to die at the age of 88 years old. <laughs> I was, so basically, I've got the questions in this phone. So I've got two phones. And last night, I was listening to a podcast about people that lost their best friends um, quite early in life. So I was already... You know, I was thinking about death and I've got my two phones in hand because I was Bluetoothing the, the screenshots from your questions from one phone to the next. And at some point I was asking myself, oh, I, I wonder what age I'll be when I die. And I have noticed that at the very same moment, both of my phones, the battery was at 88%. Both of them, the two phones together, 88. How could that, how could that happen? How could that not be a sign? Um, so yeah, I think I'll, I'll, die, I'll die at 88, so I don't think it'll be a plane crash, although we never know. I wish, I mean, I hope I'm still going to be flying at, at 88, but who knows. Um, oh, I do prefer innocent until, uh, until proven guilty, Robert, yes. Uh, uh, yes, I mean, it's probably one of my biggest, fe biggest fear in life, it's like, suddenly being accused of a random murder and, and then the justice system just going at you and, 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 and being a, a terrible spiral of proving your innocence. So no, I, I prefer, um, you know, and I was 88. It's a, it's a good age to go, I suppose. You were born in 88. Oh, I'm 87. So you're younger than me. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's get rolling. Um, the first question is from Anne, uh, Anne Little Hale, um, if you could have a dream job, what would it be? Mm, that's a good one. Uh, well, I think I already do one of the best jobs in the world, really, because I get paid to talk to people. Uh, so it's quite, oh, that's right. It could be in 1888 as well. Mm, I didn't think about that. But yeah. Maybe I did die in 1888. Maybe that's what they meant 
Maybe that's a past life of mine. Maybe I was a ripper victim. Who knows? Anyway, back to the dream job. Um, so yeah, I think I already do the best job. I get paid to talk to people. I mean, it's, you know, it's amazing. There's a, an interview somewhere of Prince Harry is being asked um, what, if you could do a normal job, what would you do? And apparently he says, I'd like to be a, a, a tour guide. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, if I had to do another dream job though, um, I think I'll be an actress, like uh, maybe a stage actress. Um, or oh, maybe TV as well. Actually, I'd love to be in a show, like a sitcom or whatever. And then the show would be translated in, you know, dubbed in Russian or in, in Polish. And then I could watch myself talking Russian. That'd be quite cool. Uh, but yeah, so far, I'm, I'm happy with being a tour guide. Um, Praxis is asking, what's your favorite uh, pizza topping? Um, hmm. uh, well, I have to confess... I don't like pizzas. Uh, like, well, I suppose I, I'll eat them because pizzas are usually like a, a, a social thing, you know. So if you if you invite me and there's only pizza, I'll, I'll eat pizza. But I'm not like I don't really like cheese. Uh, that's why I've been banned from France. So um, yeah, it's. Uh, well, I suppose if I have to choose a pizza, usually, I mean, if you give me like twenty quid to spend on Uber Eats or anything. Never would I would I order a pizza, but if I have to, I think I'll have tuna. There used to be, there still is a, a nice uh, pizza place in Soho that did uh, a tuna with with no cheese. So yeah, I, I think I'd say tuna. And I don't mind pineapple. Shh. <laughs> I know that's a big debate. Um, next, Emily is asking if you could travel anywhere new. In the world, money, w money not being an object, money being no object, where would you go? Um, hmm, I'm tempted to say somewhere that's not new. Red or white wine? I don't do wine either, Robert. Uh, I'm, I'm a terrible French. I mean, I do enjoy a croissant, but uh, I don't. Again, if there's nothing else, I'll drink white wine, no red. Uh, but it's not, uh, yeah. I'm more of a uh, I'm more of a, an IPA kind of girl or cider or anything. But what's my favorite animal? Raccoons. Although I've never seen any, but um, I need to go to Belgium. Apparently, there are some raccoons in the forest in Belgium. So yeah. Uh, so if I could go anywhere new, if I could go anywhere, money not being an object, I, I would actually go to New Caledonia. That's where my brother lives, and that's where I used to live as a teenager. It's not new. Well, actually, it is new. It's New Caledonia, but it's not new to me. It's one of the most expensive flight tickets, though. It's uh, uh, last time I checked, it was one thousand seven hundred to get there, because the the company that flies there, I think they've got the monopoly, so they can do whatever they want. Um, so yeah, if money was not an object, I'll take you all with me to to New Caledonia, and at least I wouldn't have to pay for a hotel, because I'm hoping I could stay with the bro. Maybe not, who knows. Um, the next one is from Victor. Uh, hold on. If I could go back in time, well, where would I go? David, I think I've got a question that's quite similar to this one coming up, so I'll, uh, I'll get back to you on, on this one. Um, uh, oh, Victor is asking me, will I ever go back to Dubai? Yes, I'm going on the 28th. Uh, I probably found the cheapest tickets on the market. I'm literally flying there for 170 pounds. I'm going back. Um, so yeah, I'm going there because my parents are going to visit my sister. So I'll, um, I'll go. And Arizona, maybe one day, one day. <laughs> um, oh, the next one is sweet. Uh, Tina is asking... What do you say at the beginning of all your videos? <laughs> That's sweet. Do, do you guys know? What do I say? I'm sure some of you know. Have I? Yes, I've, I've had a paranormal, well, what I believe to be a paranormal experience, uh, Rose. Let me see. Did you guys get this one? What do I say? Yes, exactly, Tish. Yes. I didn't realize people didn't understand it, but yeah, I usually say, hey, gang. 
I um because I don't want to say hey guys because some feminist or ultra feminist maybe they, they think it's not very inclusive they think that hey guys has never been meant to be including ladies so I don't want anyone to feel excluded so that's why I say hey gang I used to of course call you voyagers on, on hey go because that's that was the name of the group right the, the hey go voyagers but um I well, let's say if I was on YouTube being like, hey, voyagers, people would think I speak French because it's such a French word. And if they don't know where it's coming from, um, so that's why I went with hey, gang. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's see. That's it for this page. Oh, that's the one uh, from Herbivore. So that's quite similar to what David was asking. If you could take us back in time to do a tour where would it be and how close to the real time dark stuff would you get um there are so many there are so many years and time and places i'd like to take you um i'd like to say that I'd, i would take you to uh, Whitechapel in 1888 but actually i probably wouldn't um cuz i don't it's not that I don't care about who Jack the Ripper was, but the answer is probably going to be very disappointing. He was probably just a psychopath that no one has heard of till now. Um, I think I'd, I would take you to uh, to the Priory uh, in, uh, was it 1871? You know, the, the, the Bravo mystery. Um, some of you might not know that story, but, you know, it's um, we talked about it when we went to uh, West Norwood Cemetery. So there's a, uh, there was this murder or, or suspicious death uh, that could be that could be manslaughter, that could be an accident, it could be a murder, it could be a suicide. It's one of the biggest uh, 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 Victorian murder mystery, really. And I think I'd take you there, and I would take you right into the pri so the priory is the house in which it happened. Um, I would take you right there to see who did it, if. Uh, 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 if we could, yeah. Um, Iris is asking, what is your craziest story on tour and the funniest questions asked on a tour? Ooh, that's going to be a long one. Um, take you to the Rennes Chateau. Uh, well, I could, there are so many castles I could take you to if we could uh, go back in time or just have permissions. Um, so, uh, funniest questions I was asked. I'm going to go with the questions I was asked on, on an in-person tour. Not the questions I got asked on, on Hego, because we never know. What, uh, you could be watching, you know, so I don't want to be offending anyone. Um, uh, Robert, I'll get back to you on this one. Um, I think the best question I had was in front of Buckingham Palace... Um, in in the afternoon, I think the Queen was in residence that day because the the standard was up. <laughs> Someone asked me, but you know when you get a a weird question, you, you can you kind of have to act like if it was a completely normal question, you know, because you don't want to make them feel stupid. Um, so this gentleman looked at me and he's like, Natalie, do you know, do you know the Queen? Does she ever? go out wearing an orange wig and I was like, I just pictured it and I was like um do you when you say orange do you do you mean like easy jet orange or do you mean like ginger and he said um ginger <laughs> so I was like no I don't think she does no because I mean, if she did come out with a, a ginger wig, then she would look like Harry, and then people would put two and two together. So no, I don't think she does. Um, but yeah, that was an interesting one. And uh, I had another one that was... That was a tour in French, so it's not like if he could have misunderstood anything from my accent. We are on the South Bank, um, and we're looking at the Shard. So for the ones that don't know, the Shard is... a. Um, it was for a little while the tallest building in Europe, 103 meters high. It's like, like a cone, you know, like a broken shard of glass. 
And he looks at me again very seriously and he's like, so that building is a car park, right? And, and I was like, do you mean, does the building have a car park? <laughs> and, and he's like, no, it is a car park, right? <laughs> and I, I just, I was like bugged, you know, I was like, what? And I was like, no, no, it's not 72 floors of, of car park. And he's like, oh, what is it then? <laughs> it was like, well, it was, um, it's, it, you've got offices, you've got, you've got flats, you've got an attraction at the top called The View. Um, uh, but then l much later on, I understood where it was coming from. I mean, days later, because um, I might have, uh, you know, we've got a, a building called the Walkie Talkie that actually melted a jaguar because of the reflection of, of, of the sun. And I think what might have happened is that, you know, sometimes people listen to you, but they don't. They're like taking photos and stuff. And he might have overheard part of that story. And he might have, have believed I was talking about the shard. And therefore, the shard was a car park. Although the walkie-talkie is not a, a car park either. Welcome, Marian. Um... What is my favorite food to cook for myself? Um, so I don't really cook any recipes. I'll, so basically, um, I've been trying to live on food waste since uh, uh, 12 of April 2020. So I basically eat what I find. I've got different ways of finding food, some that are fully legal, some that are not. Um, but basically, I don't really have a, a favorite dish that I would go on and cook because I eat what I what I find. So if I find carrots, I'll get carrots. If I find, um, you know, or, 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 so yeah. So at the moment, I have a lot of uh, prêt à manger sandwiches and salads because I've got a contact from a um, from a, a, a shop. But yeah, I, uh, I I don't really go to the shop and like. You know, I'm not like, oh, I'm going to do bolognese tonight and buy the bolognese because I'm trying to... Uh, I mean, the amount of food waste on this planet is ridiculous, so I'm trying to do my little bits to, to reduce it. Um, anyway. Uh, let's see the next. Oh, yeah, so I didn't finish that one. So, um, so that was for the funniest questions. I've also been getting some questions recently that are not so fun. Um, in the last year or so, I find that a lot of the teenagers, they can ask you some questions that are very violent. Like, at the changing of the guards, you've got, through the dismissal ceremony at the end, the end, two guards kind of salute each other with a sword. And often the teenagers are like, is he, is he going to kill him? No. Or, I mean, you know, or I had one, oh, that was, that was weird as well. Um, I was telling them that you know the guards, the, the guard, the, the the king's guard, when they're marching in such places as the changing of the guards, if you are in the middle of the way, they have to go exactly the way they have to go. So they would go for the collision, and it has happened in the Tower of London. There are a few videos. Um, no, not too good to go. Um, so for the ones that don't know, too good to go is an app to get food from the restaurants and stuff. You pay for that, and some of that food is not actually wasted. So that's why I don't. You no, know, I literally, uh, I'm, I'm literally a freegan. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll. There's another app that's amazing. It's called Olio. So it's for food waste only, and it is free. Or sometimes I would literally trespass the the supermarket bins at night. Um, I'm not financially in trouble. I, it's, it's. I, I just believe this food has to be eaten. Those animals have died for us. We have to eat them. You know, that's the, 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 we, you know, we fished all those salmon and then we don't eat them. I mean, it's just, you know, um, ridiculous. So yeah, anyway, so the, um, uh, uh, so I'm being distracted between the question lies of lives on those ones. So yeah, I was telling them that the guards, they have to go for the, um, for the, 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 the collision and, uh, the, uh, we have a few videos that went viral. One of them was a guard at the tower and he went right, right into a kid. And that teenager asked me like, has there been many fatalities? I'm like, no, no. I mean, if a guard at the changing of the guard walked into a tourist and killed him, 
I think they would have changed the rules and I think we would have heard about it. So yeah, very violent questions. I had another, another teenager not long ago. Um, so that was already dark enough. I was telling them that at the time we used to have lions at, at the tower and that um, people could come and visit the menagerie and they, they could pay three and a half penny to get in and see the wild uh, animals. And sadly, at the time, you could get in for free if you brought with you a cat or dog live to, to feed the lions. And that's already bad enough, right? 20 minutes later, the teenage, teenager is like, I have a question, I have a question. You know, earlier when we talked about the lions, um, the... You said they sometimes they they, they 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 put a little animal and uh, did they also do that with unwanted babies? And I was like, no, but you know, like what? No, but I didn't want to make him feel like his question was horrible, you know. But no, um. So yeah, some some teenager these days. I don't know what they're watching or or what they're playing as in, in video games, but like some of their questions are getting like really, yeah. Um, and anyway, at, there was another part of this question. So someone was asking about the app, Olio, O-L-E-O. So Olio is amazing. There, there are two different um, types of donations. Like for example, tomorrow I'm going to Poland. If I had some food in my fridge that I wouldn't have the time to eat, I could list it on Olio and one of my neighbors could come and pick it up so it doesn't go wasted. Or, uh, sorry, I, um, all I, like uh, like uh, oil in, in Italian. Um, it's only in the UK anyway, well, I'm guessing it's only in the UK. So you've got this type of donations or you've got some um, volunteers that go and collect from uh, um, Pret-a-Manger or, or Tesco I'm happy to name the company because lovely companies, Tesco, pret manger they do give that, that food away, whatever, the, whatever they can give. Um, and, and then they redistribute, but it has to be done before midnight because the next day it's no longer allowed. Um, so, yeah. So if you have a bicycle or whatever and you, you're able to go late at night, it's, it's, it's quite uh, convenient. Anyway, so the first part of that question um, was... What is your craziest story on a tour? So I'm guessing a live tour, I mean a, a in-person tour. Um, craziest tour. Well, I think the worst, like just the, the, the madness tour I had was um, maybe three years ago, it was uh, Trooping the Colors, so the, the Queen's birthday, or fake birthday, because the Queen had two birthdays. Uh, so, the, so does Charles. Um, I had to go into Portsmouth at 6 a.m. to pick up a group of 80 French people coming with the Brittany ferries. And uh, <laughs> they were meant to go and see the changing of the guards. There was no changing of the guards, of course, because it was Trooping the Colors. And I don't know if you've ever been to Trooping the Colors, uh, but it's mad, it's crazy busy because they want to see the royal family uh, waving at the balcony. And um, so I had to sleep in Portsmouth in a, in a crappy hotel the night before alone. It was pouring down rain. And those jobs are terribly, it's very bad pay because I, I used to get paid for a day. It didn't matter if the day was seven hours or 24 hours. And anyway, got there 6 a.m. So it was meant to be two buses because obviously 80 people do not fit in a, in a coach. Um, and I had called, it's not my job, but I had run the bus company the day before just to make sure that the coach was indeed booked and get the phone number of one of the drivers, just in case I cannot find them. And the uh, the Brittany ferry arrives, 80 French people get out, get out, and I had only one bus. The, they literally didn't book the second bus. And um, and that, that was just a nightmare, because uh, so obviously it was 6 a.m., so to get someone to book a last-minute bus. And, so for about two and a half hours, I was in uh, on a car park, no idea when I was going to be able to get them on the bus with 80 French people going, Apéro, Apéro, Apéro is on you, Apéro, Apéro. Apéro is uh, uh, an aperitif, you know, that I couldn't even buy at 8 a.m. anyway. And I'm not going to buy 80 drinks. And, and every so often they'll go, uh, 
how long more? How, I had no idea because the, the you know the, the the second coach was not booked, and um, and yeah, eventually the, the the second coach did get there two and a half hours later, and I had to take them to because when you do those panel tours, you have to see Buckingham Palace anyway because otherwise you can have a complaint. So I had to take them to Buckingham Palace knowing it was. Uh, uh, trooping the colors and I didn't want to tell them it was trooping the colors because I didn't want them to hope to see the queen at the balcony we did get there eventually but um, the queen was already uh, gone to horse guard um, I was very lucky not to lose anyone but yeah crazy because on on a tour whatever happens it's always the guy's fault like it, the guide is responsible for the weather the weather is responsible for the bookings is responsible for the hotel is responsible for the pillows at the hotel if you're missing one it's always the guide's fault uh, so yeah that was just a crazy one um anyway next <laughs> um boop, boop. oh so this one is a bit similar so pisas is asking what has been your most interesting, both good and bad, in-person tours? Um, well, bad, we've already had a bad one. Uh, interesting. I suppose interesting. I had, luckily, it was only two, two ladies, uh, two different bookings. I had um, a, a, a lady that was uh, partially sighted once in, in my tour, and... Uh, she didn't mention it because she was wearing uh, sunglasses, but at the very beginning I was like, you know, sometimes you point stuff, you don't realize as a guy, but you actually point towards stuff and people look, and she didn't, and I was like, oh, are you partially sighted? Bear in mind, I, I didn't actually know at the time anyone that was uh, uh, blind or, or partially sighted, and um, now I do, but at the time I didn't, and uh, that's been an interesting experience because I offered my arm, but... I didn't realize, but it's there's actually a technique to give your arm to to somebody because it's 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 actually uh, uh, interesting. So I kind of uh, with her, I kind of learned a lot about you know how she was able to travel alone and what were the challenges and all that. So that was uh, an interesting one, challenging as well, but interesting. And um, where is one area that you do not want to be for a tour? Um, there's nowhere, um, nowhere I do not, uh, feel comfortable on a tour, uh, but there are some areas that could be annoying when you have the London Marathon or the opening of Parliament or when, you know, um, um, but there's nowhere, I mean, obviously there's a lot of areas that would be very boring for a tour. Uh, but there's nowhere I wouldn't feel comfortable, like, you know. Um, so Robert is asking, God, uh, agnostic, atheist. Um, uh, I... There must be something. I, I think we can probably all agree there must be something. Um, I don't associate myself with any particular religion, although I was raised uh, Catholic. Uh, I fairly strongly believe in reincarnation, though. I think there's some uh, very interesting study. It's the, um, the University of um, Virginia. There's a professor there that specializes in, in past life-related thing, and it's fairly common to have young kids that actually remember their past lives. And I think soon we should be able to um, actually scientifically prove it. We're not there quite yet, but I think it's, uh, there are so many cases, you know. Not that I believe everything I see online, but there are so many. And it's a s serious study, you know. Um, so, yeah, I do, uh, I do believe there's another world. And, and there are some people that had some near-death experience as well. They've clearly been there, you know. They, they all tell you pretty much the same story. So, um, yeah, there is, there is something after life. Um, but I wouldn't tell you. Uh, I cannot tell you if the which god is the uh, the, the the actual god. Um, oops, hold on. Oh, Sarah is asking, what is the funniest unplanned moment on your live tours? I had quite a few. I had. Well, I suppose I find them funny now. I didn't. Um, 
I didn't at the time. Um, the, there was a polar bear at the tower. Yes, there, there was a polar bear at the tower. He had a chain and he could go and fish for himself in the river. Um, he didn't live very long. Um, so, I had, well, I had a few experiences with the police. Three, never on Hego, always on beams. Two, on the same tour. Uh, I had one, so, well, you'd have to put the, so I was on a bicycle with my gimbal in, in Vauxhall. So it was a tour about spies and James Bond and because we were going towards the MI6. So you'd have to picture the scene, right? I'm with my gimbal, with my bicycle on a cycle lane. So it's dangerous, but only that dangerous. And I'm playing James Bond music. So I had my other phone in my bra playing James Bond. And there's this gentleman. He's actually wearing um, uh, 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 normal, normal uh, clothing. He stops me and he gets out a, a police card. I'm still live. And he basically tells me off about uh, about um, cycling with a gimbal, which is not in the illegal, but it's, you know, it's... it's. Uh, and then he shows me, he probably didn't realize I was still alive. He was like, see that thief? That's how it got broken, you know, bicycle accidents. So obviously I got off the bicycle, um, then just walked my bike. It's, it's a bit inconvenient with a gimbal. And then um, jumped on a bike again on the riverside because it's uh, pedestrianized, so it's not dangerous. And then we got to the, to the, um, the U.S. Embassy. And as I'm walking towards the embassy, we've got two uh, um, very well gunned up uh, police officers walking right towards me. And I was like, uh oh, I think it might be for me. And uh, yes, it was indeed. They did not want me to film the embassy. Um, in their defense, it's, it's actually security reasons. They had, what I didn't know is that there had been an um, evacuation uh, of the embassy. And it's one of the most secure buildings in the world, you know, so they probably didn't want me to be filming the uh, fire exits and, and all, all of that. But yeah, there was two police incidents on the same tour. And the same month, um, I also had one on the Guy Fawkes uh, tour. So the tour I did a few days ago. Um, on beams again, on Hego, it was absolutely fine. That night, there had been some um, riots at uh, in front of Parliament because it was Guy Fawkes night. So people with the um, V for Vendetta mask had been fighting and causing trouble. Um, I had already burned the little Guy Fawkes on Hego, but an hour later, I did the same too on, on Beams. And uh, so again, you'd have to picture the scene. Very busy Parliament Square, me with my phone, burning a little, a tiny little illustration of Guy Fawkes that was on a toothpick that I had put into the grass. And the police came, so I extinguished everything. And I'm still alive. And he's like, you okay? What are you doing? I'm like, I'm just burning Guy Fawkes. Um, and I was like, can we see into your bags? <laughs> And I was like, are you going to search me for explosive on a Guy Fawkes tour? Which was brilliant, really. But obviously, um, they, they probably didn't realize I was live. But I was just... To, my, now I find it hilarious. But at the time, obviously, you don't feel that comfortable. Oh, you remember, Marlene? Yeah. At the time, it was a little bit um, uncomfortable. Um, I wish I had a video because we don't... Uh, we've been... It wasn't really recorded. You wouldn't get the, the videos. But yeah, I had... So I had those. I had... Well, I'm sure some of you might remember my, I think it might have been my second tour. Um, I was doing Jack the Ripper through the lockdown at 10.30 a.m. So it's not early, early. And I was still fairly new to, uh, to, uh, to, to streaming. And um, I had been talking about Victorian butchers being very loud at the beginning of the tour. And when we got to um, uh, where I usually talk about uh, Annie Chapman, the, I was actually saying bye when this guy comes out shouting at me. I didn't know at the time if, if people could hear him because the microphone is on me, not, not on him. And he's, he's like, yeah, I didn't hear anyone that loud on the street since the 1880s when you had those Victorian butchers. You sound like a Victorian butcher, which was actually quite funny because 20 minutes earlier I was talking about Victorian butchers. But... um. I just, I couldn't say anything anyway. He was shouting at me. Uh, oh, you remember, Hilary? Yeah. And, and apparently I woke up his baby, but it, it was 10.30 a.m. I'm allowed to speak on the streets, you know? Um, yeah, now I find it funny, but on the spot, I, I didn't. And, uh, and it just wouldn't stop, you know? I was like, okay, I got the message. I can, I can just uh, lower my voice, but yeah. 
Um, but you know, those young parents, uh, when they have baby crying all night and not sleeping, I suppose they get a bit... Uh, I actually, you know what? I ran into him um, uh, two months ago. I was in a, in a private tour in, in Spitalfield and I saw him coming straight towards me. So I looked at my guest. I was like, oh, look, oh, just just turning my face so he wouldn't see me. And he actually didn't, didn't recognize me at all. Uh, but yeah. And uh, oh, there's another one that I'm sure some of you might remember. That was funny. Even on the spot, it was funny. I was in, um, in front of the Angel pub in, in, in Rotherhithe. It's a very old pub that used to have uh, smugglers. Because, you know, of course, back in the days, you had to pay taxes and, and all the goods coming into the port. And Rotherhithe, well, it's, it's in the docks, you know. So you had some people trying to, to bring some, um, some uh, 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 um, goods and not pay their taxes, right? And I'm filming the pub. I'm a good 20 meters from the pub. And there were some lads there wearing a suit. They had, they had gone to a funeral. I knew that because I had seen them earlier. And I'm just saying, oh, this pub used to have a lot of smugglers. And he comes right towards me. I mean, he had a few drinks, but he looked dead serious. And he's like, you, you tell your people on YouTube. Yeah, I wasn't on YouTube yet, but you tell your people on YouTube. You tell them I'm not a smuggler. I'm not a smuggler. That's not something I'm involved in. I was like, okay. I was talking about 300 years ago. But guys, just so you know, this gentleman that I didn't want to put on camera. So I was kind of, uh, this gentleman is not a smuggler, right? <laughs> and then I had to, of course, escape. But yeah, a bit intoxicated, but very serious. Um Anyway, next. Um, oops, I've done this one. Hold on. Did I? Um, I've done this, I've done this. Oh, so Dr. Benita is asking me, uh, do your personal entertainment preference include true crime shows, podcasts, books? If so, any recommendations? Um, yes, it does. Um, but for my personal entertainment, I usually I would look into uh, um, more recent crimes. Like I love uh, these appearances. Uh, there are a couple of uh, French YouTubers that does that do these appearances that I follow, but no need to recommend them because it's in French. Um, there's a, there's a gentleman in, in uh, well, he's, he's, um, he's in London actually, Adrian, Coffee House Crime. He does some uh, nice little videos about, uh, uh, about um, true crimes. Um, there are a lot of podcasts, but I'm a bit picky with my podcast. Um, uh, I'll get back to, to you on this one, David. Uh, yeah, the... With podcasts, there are, there are a lot of true crime podcasts nowadays, a lot of them. Even the historical ones, like the some of the cases I created tours about two years ago, like Eliza Grimhood or, or, or whatever, at the time there was hardly anything on YouTube or in terms of podcasts, and now there are dozens of them. So in the, in the last uh, um, couple of years, true crime podcasts have been... Hmm, but with podcasts, usually I listen to them when I go to bed. So I prefer... Um, is Adam doing a podcast? I didn't know. No, I've not uh, not seen any of it. But yeah, I prefer podcasters that are alone. Because when it's two of them, sometimes they do jokes and they laugh very, very loud. And that wakes me up when I'm trying to sleep. So I prefer um, podcasts that are uh, a single person uh, recording. And... Uh, Books. I have a lot of books, uh, but I'm a slow reader, so I buy a lot of books about crimes, especially uh, uh, old crimes. But um, I don't. Uh, I, I take forever to read them, so I, I have tons of books that I wouldn't recommend yet because I've not had time to uh, to read them. And uh, let me see what else. Okay, Tish. Would I ever do a podcast? Um, Natasha, it's been something I had in mind, but if I did, that wouldn't be in English. And I have, uh, when a good friend of mine is one of the top uh, podcasters in France, so he could actually uh, give me a little bit of promo if I wanted to do. Because I don't think there's much in terms of like 
uh, London history in French. So if I did, that would that would be in French, because in English there, there's so much. There's a there's a an amazing selection of podcasts about London history or London crimes. Or so I don't think there's a, a marketplace for me in uh, in, in English. No. Uh, but yeah, that's something I would uh, consider. Um, Oh, amazing! Uh, uh, and Sparkles. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you found it. It's an amazing app. It's. Uh, I've been with them for years, and they started very little, and now there's a lot of food to be found there. So yeah, right. Fish uh, questions. What is your favorite virtual virtual tour to give, and why? Uh, it used to be Jack the Ripper, on Hego, because with Hego, um. You know, Hegel was trying hard to promote itself and grow, so I could do the same tour pretty much every month, and I'd, I'd always have a few newbies um, and new followers, and so I I didn't feel bad about doing the same material or the same jokes. So um, last time I did Jack the Ripper with with most of you guys on on YouTube, to be honest, I felt a bit funny because I knew that most of you had seen it several times before, so. It's not that it's scripted, of course, everything is different and you get a different question, and, and but a lot of the content would be very similar. So I did, um, if there's no new audience, it does feel a bit funny to do the same um, material in terms of, of, of stories and, and, and research in front of the same audience. So it's not really my favorite anymore. It might be one day if I have a lot of new, uh, 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 new, uh, new followers. Tish is asking again, if signal on access to the location were not an issue, where would you take us on a tour? Well, if access to the location was not an issue, I'd be knocking at doors. Every time I show you a murder house, I'd be like, hey, can we go upstairs? And when I show them the actual room. Um, but yeah, that would be a bit awkward. Um, and uh, there's, well, I suppose there's a lot of... Um, you know, catacombs or like in 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 Hythe, you know, there's a there's a place, it's on my Instagram with a lot of uh, skulls and stuff um, where signal wouldn't be good and there's almost no need to try because we just know it's bad. But that'd be quite cool to take you down there as well. Teddy loves Jack, yes. Um, another interesting one <laughs> from Tish again. Do, prettiest, do the prettiest girls burp the loudest? Uh, I'm afraid I don't have a definite answer, but I think they do, yes. Um, because the prettiest girls, they don't, um, they've got nothing to lose. You know, they're already pretty, so they don't, uh, um, when the girls that are not so pretty, uh, they might they might not be that comfortable about their burps. Um, but I don't know for sure. I've not, I've not uh, done the statistics quite yet. Um, so that's a question from Angie. How does a French end up in London? Uh, well, I cannot tell you how does a French end up in London. I'm sure they all have different stories, but I can tell you how I ended up here. I came here on a weekend um, and I just wanted to stay. I didn't actually stay. I, I, I went back to finish, uh, to finish uh, uh, my uh, art degree, uh, but then I, uh, then I came back. So, yeah. I just kind of fell in love with the city and uh, and um, at the time I used to be a bit of a party animal so you know in London you you can party for 48 hours if you wanted to you don't need to drive you don't want to drive anyway because back home in France I, I if I wanted to go to a nightclub most of the time I couldn't have a drink because a lot of my friends didn't have a driving license yet so I would often have to drive them home and uh, I was always very serious with that so um yeah, I think at first I, I just loved the, the, the party spirit and the fact that, um, you know, in London you can wear whatever whatever you want and do whatever you want. People are not going to look at you on the street. They might, they might look at you and then smile, but they're not going to be like, oh, look at her shoes. Oh, look what she's wearing today. Oh, you know, um, so that's what I liked at first. Now, oh, there's another question that was connected to France. Uh, uh, Sandrine was asking, um, do... Is there anything I miss about about France, and do I still love them? Um, anything I miss? 
he, anything physical, no. Like I don't go to France to buy cheese or anything. Um, I do sometimes still today get frustrated with um, British politeness. Um, sometimes I just wish that people had the French um, honesty. You know, like sometimes in Britain, it's almost like, you know, saying, oh, I'd, I'd think about it. It's like a polite way to say no. And I just wish that people would just say no, like, no, just no, just say it. You can say no. Um, so, yeah, the, the, sometimes I, I do get, get frustrated when uh, um, it is, I mean, it is a fact. Pe uh, people in Britain can be a little bit overly polite or like, let's say if you go, I don't know, maybe not with close friends, but let's say I'm with a work colleague and we have two hours to kill and we go into a charity shop and I try on a, a jacket um, and I'm like, oh, does it look good on me? Um, uh, a French person would be like, no, you look fat, you know, it, it, you look fat in that one, don't buy it. When a British person might be like, um, maybe not your best color, like, you know, so sometimes I'm like, just say it, uh, but yeah, um, and do I still love them? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, I don't necessarily feel much closer to somebody because they're French, like sometimes, especially not in London, I mean, it's, it's, it's the sixth uh, biggest French city, um, but, uh, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, uh, she's French, you know, go and speak to her. And I'm like, I don't care, you know. Uh, it's not like if I was in the middle of the Amazonia forest and then you run into a French person, it's a little bit more um, rare. But uh, in London, it's not rare. So, uh, but yeah, I still love them. Right, let me see. I think that might have been the last one. Let me see what I've missed. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, that's done, that's done. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's it. Um, it's uh, that was the last one for the, uh, the the questions already written. But if you have any uh, any last minute questions to pop in the chat, feel free uh, feel free to do so. Your mum raised you to be honest, so yeah. <laughs> Well, the Frank, uh, the, the the Frank are, the, you know, that's why they are called the Frank. Uh, the uh, um, obviously there are a few exceptions everywhere. You know, not everyone is. Uh, um, favorite fellow guide. Uh, well, there are so many amazing guides. I couldn't pick one because then I don't want to. I, I, I don't want anyone else to be uh, uh, offended. But there are some amazing guides uh, on. Uh, on Hego and on YouTube now. Oops, hold on. In terms of music, I'm actually fairly uh, easy going. I can listen to some commercial stuff and, and be happy to know the lyrics and stuff. So I'm not um, I'm not too uh, not too picky. Oh, I have had have I had famous people on tours. No, not on tours, or not that I know of, because I'm terrible at recognizing famous people. Um, I have had famous people uh, when I used to work in Hamleys. Uh, uh, as a photographer, I've photographed quite a few famous people. Um, even on ice rinks, I met uh, I met uh, 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 Rishi Sunak on an ice rink uh, two winters ago, just before he became prime minister. And I was looking at him, I was like, are you... Are you who I think you are? He was like, yeah, I'm Rishi. I met Boris as well. I met, I met Boris Johnson a few times, actually, um, when I was a zombie. Because he, when I was a zombie for a scare attraction, that was quite close to, to, to City Hall. And Boris sometimes did come with the Boris bikes. And the only place where, um, at the time, the only place where you could put those Boris bikes, uh, the closest one to the City Hall, or the former City Hall, was right in front of my, uh, my uh, scare attraction. So I saw Boris many times. And when I was a photographer in Hamleys, I've had a lot of famous customers like uh, Will Smith, uh, Victoria Beckham. I spent 20 minutes with Victoria Beckham. I didn't know who she was. I knew she must have been famous because 
she was really annoying and I knew everyone was staring at us. Um, and uh, I only realized who she was when her bodyguard accidentally sent me her email address that was Victoria mm -mm -mm, at victoriabeckham.com. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Boris was... Uh, he would always say hello. He, very loud, though. Like, like if the streets belonged to him. Like, he would um, sometimes talk to his mate on the other side of the road, like, shouting, like, like if he was the only one on the street. Sounds like Vic. Who sounds like Vic? Oh, Victoria. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought we were talking about Queen Victoria. Yeah, she was very, very skinny, so that's why I didn't... Uh, I mean, she didn't look like in the in the nineties, but yeah, she was uh, she was basically printing a phone case for David. Uh, I didn't I didn't actually realize. I mean, for her husband, but I didn't know at the time. And I took photos of um, one of their kids as well too. We used to be one of the only places where we could print photographs on a phone case. Um, now it's everywhere, but at the time it was extremely rare. You direct her from work, met him. Who Boris Johnson? So let me know if you have any any more questions before uh, before we go. If not, I will uh, I will let you go. Yes, he had dinner with him. I'm not sure I'll have a, I'd want to have dinner with Boris. But <laughs> What is my favorite movie or show? Huh. Um, mm. Recent shows. Uh, uh, well, obviously, I enjoyed The Crown, but that's everyone these days. Uh, shows of all times, I think we can... Probably all say that Friends was one of the biggest shows, the, the best shows of all time. Um, movies. I don't know. I used to love the the Truman Show when I was uh, when I was a teenager because that was one of the the thing that that I had imagined myself a few times, you know. So yeah, um, guilty pleasure. Um, I don't really have any, uh, maybe a gin and tonic, but it's not something I'd have alone, like, you know, uh, yeah. Is your accent an advantage for you? Are Brits uh, ecstatic that you can speak English so well or could they care less? Um, I think they couldn't care less. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the thing that is quite good with the Brits and that could be slightly different in America is that... Um, you know, in Britain, people don't really um, undermine your expertise because you have an accent, you know. Some people, again, not everyone, but some people from the US can. It has sometimes, like especially when I used to do tours at the British Museum, sometimes I could feel that with some people, I had to work harder to show that I knew my stuff, you know. Um, and I think Britain is an amazing country in terms of, I mean, even in France, like, you go to France, if you don't speak French, it's going to be really hard to, to, to find a job. And um, um, in in the UK, I think, you know, people do give you your chance, uh, whatever your, lo your level of English might be. Favorite color, purple. What words do I have trouble saying? Um, uh, turtle. Um, um, Rotherhithe, anything with uh, TH or too many TH in a row or just too many H's like 
Well, the thing with French is that we skip H's and S's, like the S at the end of the, the word as well, because like, the, I mean, the normal plural, I wouldn't skip it when I'm writing down, but because they're not being pronounced in French, sometimes I would skip a lot of um, S's by accident. Um, uh, yeah, anything with a TH. So I find that I can do TH at the beginning of the word, because you just focus on, th like if you are gonna spit, th but when it's in the middle of the word, it's harder. Um, What other project are you working on uh, beside guiding? Not much, not much. I um, Well, I'm trying to do some travel videos as well, like uh, little travel vlogs, but it's, I suppose, in a way, it's still guiding. Oh, you've got to go for dinner, go, go. Oh, yeah, biscuits. But biscuits, I say, it's, I say it right. It's you. You don't know how to say it properly. <laughs> Oops, my microphone has... Hold on. Um, so, yeah, biscuits. Uh, uh, there, there are many more. I just cannot think of them right now. But there are, there are many more that uh, I know I don't say right. But as long as it's still understandable, I don't, uh, I don't mind. Basic, the thing that I don't think I will ever be able to say properly, it's the long E's or the short E's. Like, I was watch, And the thing is, I can hear it. When I say it, but I cannot say it right. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was watching the video I did of uh, Tenerife the other day, and um, you know when I say beans on toast, it sounds like I say beans, like a bean bag on toast. I don't know how to say beans on toast. I mean, it sounds like <coughs> exaggerated, um, but again, it's the same one as uh, shit on shit on fist on fist on. on it's just the long e's and the short e's. They, they seem to be exactly the same to me. Um, so, yeah. Let me see if I've missed any. No, I think that's it. Cool. Uh, I, think, uh, I think that's, uh, that's all. Uh, how do I say honest? An hour, hour, <coughs> hour. Um, yeah, honest. I feel like it's easier that to to not skip the the H, but hour is weird. Yeah. So if I say hour, it probably sounds like hour, hour. You know. Um, yeah. It's a great way I say them. Well, as long as long as they are understandable, I suppose it's fine. But. Um, you know, sometimes people come from an area where, where they've not been confronted too much accents and, and I, I, I do want them to understand me, you know. Anyway, I don't see any more questions, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get going. Um, thank you very much for coming tonight. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that little, uh, that little uh, ask me any, anything question. Ask, ask me anything session. It's funny because I'm, uh, you know, like, in, I've just realized recently that the French had stolen, you know, when you say FAQ, frequently ask questions on, on a website or whatever. I've just realized that the French have stolen that for the AMA. So they call it FAQ, but it's foire aux, que aux, foire aux, que foire aux questions, which is like a question bazaar. So they've literally stolen the, uh, the, the thing and... Um, and uh, they made it another thing. Uh, that happens a lot. We often take British terminology and then we, we change it for some reason. So this was a, a FAQ in, uh, in French, a foire aux questions. Um, anyway, thank you guys. Uh, have a good evening, a good morning, uh, whatever time it is for you. If you want to see a bit more of me, don't forget on Sunday, I'm taking you to Gdansk in Poland. So I'm going away for a few days. I had a few days off in a row and I did not want to stay here because I didn't have uh, uh, I didn't have any work. Now I've actually got a few requests, but too late. I've got tickets to go to Gdansk. The forecast is not looking great, but it seems like an amazing city with a lot of history. So um, that's Sunday. Um, 
it should be late evening for me, but I think it's the time in Poland is a bit, uh, so it's probably 9 p.m. UK time or something like that. Cool. So yeah, and if anyone happened to be new to me, of course, uh, do uh, do go and check my live section. Do uh, do give me a subscribe. Uh, I don't think anyone would be new and on this uh, ask me anything uh, session, but uh, why not? I'm taking my broly. Yeah, that's on my. Uh, I've got a little list of things to take because I don't want to make the same mistake as I made in in Dubai when I went to Dubai. Obviously, I didn't have a broly because they have five days a year of rain in Dubai. But I had the five of them and I struggled to buy a brolet for the tour because it has, I do have to cover the, um, the gimbal. Um, kill. Right. So yeah, I'll see you in Poland. Have a good one. Thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for coming today. I, uh, I didn't know uh, uh, if so many of you would, uh, would come here. So it's amazing to see that you were all here. If any of you gave me a little tip, by the way, because I see an email notification, uh, that could be a tip. Thank you very much as well. That's always uh, greatly uh, appreciated. And um, see you later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.